Good morning, everyone. All right, so uh, we're going to start breaking down the watch list here for today. Um, no trades yet so far. So you can see my PL in the top corner. You'll be able to see the PL there as it goes up or down as I start trading. But no trades yet so far. It's about 10 of 9, and we have some momentum. Leading Gapper NVCR is up 68%. That's pretty good. Uh, it's an 88 million share float, and it's $221. So that's the first one we'll look at. The uh, interesting thing about it, I suppose, is that it kind of went straight up from 130 up to 265. I mean, that's 100% squeeze. That's straight up. But it was on quite uh, light volume. And so naturally the spreads on it at that time were quite big. They're still big. The spread right now is 21 by 25, 22 by 25. So really at this point, due to the spread, this is not easy to trade and probably wouldn't be something that I would trade at this moment right now. If the spreads tighten up, it's possible that there could be opportunities, but I, I'm not really sure. It's, you know, it's a $200 stock. That's not going to be uh, the wheelhouse for most, uh, for most traders. So that is our leading gap, or as you can see there, NVCR. And it's got a, a catalyst. It's daily chart. It's at all-time highs. All-time highs were at 200. So you know, you've got all-time highs. It's clearly... You know, it's clearly interesting, but, uh, and it's a, uh, let's see, let's see if I can get this uh, headline to open. So um, it's a, um, a cancer, uh, it's a, you know, therapeutics, um, medical, pharmaceutical, cancer uh, type of stock. So they have this trial that is, um, they have good results coming out of it. So that's what's driving that momentum there. Looks like my e-signal is freezing up a little bit. Uh, we'll see if we can get back up and running. But uh, so NVCR, that one at this point is really a hard maybe just due to the price and the spreads. Okay, so the next one down is uh, MFNC. Well, I don't have charts yet, but I can tell you that 8.8 .8 million share float and 1.6 million shares of volume pre-market. That all looks fine. It's gapping up 50%. Uh, so, so it looks, however, um, the headline that I'm seeing is that it's a report to purchase uh, for 4.64 a share. And what's the current? Well, that says, what, what day was this headline? That's from Monday. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to have to pull that up, but it looks like it's a buyout. Um, oh, because they're going to receive shares of the other company plus some money. So, yeah, it's one of these things. All right, I'm going to have to close these signal. So this second one there is a buyout. All right. Um... Third one, LG, LGVN, 3 million share float, 500,000 shares of volume pre-market, $8.50, gapping up 22%. So as that sits right now, um, it looks like it's moving up. I can see it on the level two, but I don't have charts yet, so I got to wait for my charts to come back up. So we're going to wait on that for a second. Okay. Okay, so MFNC. Yep, all right. Uh, LGVN. Okay. So uh, this has reclaimed the VWAP and did a pullback right here and has a pivot at 878 and then has room up to 893 and then room up to 950. Let's look at the catalyst. Okay, so there's a, a clear catalyst there. This is easy to borrow. 
So I think there's a good chance that um, people will be shorting in, into the first moves, given the choppiness that we've seen in the market recently. So right now I'm uh, not eager to jump in it while it's extended. I'd wait for a better opportunity. The high is nine, the high of day though is 9.50. OBAS. Um, I don't see news on this. TIRX, I saw yesterday. It's a huge sell off, no news. A lot of rumors, but no actual news. I, you know, would some people try to do a bounce dip trade on it? Or I don't know if you called it, but a reversal over 24? Sure, I'm sure I'm sure that some people would. You, It dropped from $100 to a low of 12. So you're already up 100% off the low, but it could bounce easily to 30 or 40. Wouldn't be uh, unthinkable to see that happen. Uh, although it could also get halted by the exchange especially because of that drop with no news. It's a Chinese company, so people speculating uh, about what's going on there. So probably a little too risky. Volume on it, about 1.3 million shares uh, so far today. So put that one on the high risk category. Although, of course, as always, in case you didn't know, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money and I encourage you guys to trade in a simulator before you put real money on the line and not try to blindly follow me or anyone else. You've got to learn a strategy, prove it can be profitable by trading it in the sim, and then start putting real money behind it. It's the right way to do it. It's not how I did it, but it's the right way. What I did was I jumped in and lost money. That's what happens to most beginner traders. Overconfidence. So let's see. Um, I was kind of flipping through a couple other stocks here. This NVCR would need to get above the VWAP and hold above it. Yeah, so first one minute candle to make a new high on this would be back over 880. Well, the last one's 888, but then 880. This is a pullback to the nine moving average. Nice volume profile, increasing volume into that squeeze from 840 up to uh, 888 and then a tap of nine. It's going a little bit lower here, but could consider a dip off the half dollar, 850. That's usually psychological support. This candle has 10 seconds left with a high of 80. Probably be a buyer around that level. We'll see what it does. There's 81 on the ask. Not quite as much volume there as I thought. Just giving it a second. We'll see how it consolidates. So that first candle made a new high, but only by one penny. A little premature break there. Uh, 
let's see. So that candle closes a red doji, high volume there. Double bottom, 215. Mm-hmm. I see that. Low volume selling. That's a good good sign that it's holding. Hi, that candle was uh, 227. So we'll see what this does. premature breakout on LGVN right there it's very similar to what we saw yesterday on I can't remember which one it was but um, premature breakout there five minute wasn't ready but it broke anyways I'd rather wait for uh, a good quality setup for my first trade. Taking a premature breakout for my first trade, eh, it's kind of risky. If I had a profit cushion from some earlier trades, then I might be comfortable with doing a couple of more aggressive trades, but I can't be that aggressive uh, until I first have a cushion. So on the one thing, on the one hand, a premature breakout um, can be certainly a sign of strength. You know, hey, people liked it enough to buy it early. On the other hand, it can be a bit of a problem because traders who might be sitting on the sidelines, perfectly willing and happy to take a fairly large position, might not be comfortable taking that big of a position on a false breakout. That means the false breakout is usually going to have lower volume. And then that can be uh, a higher opportunity for a short and then a bull trap and a reversal. So it kind of depends. It, I think the, the variable is how much it breaks out on the false breakout or, or the premature breakout. Because if it breaks out a lot on the premature breakout, then the first micro pullback, traders will just jump in because clearly it's showing so much strength. And people who are maybe shorting it are going to start to get squeezed a little bit and they might be forced to cover as well. So if the premature breakout is really powerful, then it can work and create more opportunities. In this case, it popped up to 920, but it's a topping tail and pretty much immediately reverses back to where it was before. So that tells me it's not as strong in this particular instance. So we've got about 25 minutes to the bell. Is there anything um, anyone else is watching this morning that I've missed? While you guys type, as a reminder, this Thursday, thankful Thursday, 100% of trading profits will get donated to charity. So I'll be streaming um, all morning as we do that um, kind of thankful Thursday special. I'm doing this for the month of April because this is our uh, anniversary month. This is six years since I published How to Day Trade. 
and seven years since I started working on our very first day trading course, which over the last seven years has, uh, I th you know, I think the first time I taught it, I don't remember, well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that story in a little bit. All right, so um, let's see. T-I-R-X, okay, some people mentioning R-I-G-L, let me look at that. Mm, R-I-G-L, you know, I don't like that daily chart. I don't really like the pattern on this too much. Um, I think I'm gonna leave this alone. Thank you, Virginia. VTVT. Uh, I don't know. So yes, the thing is VTVT, you'll get this history of gapping and fading. I don't like that very much. It's kind of a, just not a very nice history there. So I think I'd have to leave that one alone for right now. D-I-R-X, yeah, I'll look at that one again. So, yes, this is risky. Um, there's a chance that this could get halted by the exchange. That would be the biggest risk. And it could be it could never reopen. I mean, that's that would be the biggest risk, that it gets halted and then eventually gets delisted or something like that. So your risk exposure is not... Like I bought it at twenty dollars and eighty cents, I'm going to stop at twenty dollars. It's potentially everything that I've put into the trade, you know, or seventy percent of it is at risk. I'm surprised it didn't halt yesterday. I honestly, I am surprised that it just dropped. But uh, it's a Nasdaq listed stock. Nasdaq has been a little more. Um, uh, n the New York Stock Exchange has been much more conservative on getting these halted real quick when something like this happens. Uh, NASDAQ not as much. So that could be, um, you know, if, if this was a nice stock, it might have already been halted. But in any case, it may not halt today. It's just something you, sh you can't trade it without the knowledge of that risk. So I would just have to be very mindful about that. If it's trading and looking nice and is moving quickly, then, you know, I could probably catch some trades on it and uh, maybe make a little bit of money. I probably would be cautious holding it during halts because sometimes a, a circuit breaker halt can switch to halted pending news or halted uh, for something like that. And when that happens, it's a problem. So I would probably try not to hold this one during halts, but would consider trading it up to the halt levels. Thank you guys tuning in on uh, YouTube and Facebook for the morning show. Um, well, no, it, this halt, TIRX did halt. It halted many times. It's just that it didn't halt on, uh, well, let's see, where was, so there was halts up here. It's just that it didn't halt on uh, a pending news, at least as far as I'm aware. It just halted on traditional circuit breakers. 
Although it it sold off quite a lot without a lot of circuit breaker halts, but there but there were a few. So it halted going down, and I'm sure it could halt going back up as well. NVCR, yeah, so um, a double bottom now against 207, but yeah. LGVN is a pullback down to the volume weight average price. It's not that clean of a looking chart right now. The problem is the topping tail candle, two topping tails. Maybe the first five minute candle to make a new high would look a little bit better. waiting for better opportunities. Generally light volume this morning on the gappers. This is going to have descending resistance a little over nine. So MFNC, uh, there's news uh, of a it's a, a buyout takeover. So I'm not usually interested in trading these it doesn't make a lot of sense why it would be particularly volatile given that there's a a buyout uh, and an acquisition going on so i'm gonna leave it alone About 15 minutes to the bell. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll put on some music in a few minutes. Um, LGVN, a little double top there at 890. The high of this candle was 920. Really would need to break through 920 to look better. We'll see if it can just sort of consolidate at this level as we get closer to the open. LYL is too cheap. I really don't like those cheaper stocks. So not interested. NVCR broke the double bottom. It's below VWAP. We need to get back above 227 to be really of any interest. So LGVN is the second, is basically the leading gapper that's worth looking at, in my opinion, based on the price and the float and the chart and the catalyst. However, uh, it does have a couple of red candles, the IPO day and then this day here where it gapped and squeezed at 1248. However, if it can get above 1250, 1248 there. Then you've got blue sky set up. So it's a combination of a recent IPO and blue sky. It's a good sector being in the um, therapeutics biotech space. So it's the right sector potentially for some opportunities. It is easy to borrow at light speed. Already has a couple topping tails on the five. A little choppiness on the one. Yeah, I don't I don't know that in um E signal. Let's see. Hmm. You know, you see that candle there, that red volume, that top, and then the rejection. Hey, Susan, um, here, let me give you a link. You can check out this class here. Uh, the starter class is our introductory day trading class for people that have never traded before or who are just still getting started. And then the pro class is the flagship course. The pro course class includes the starter. So if you go into the pro classes, you'll go through the starter first, and then that's a prerequisite to the advanced strategy development classes that are part of the pro. So you'll be able to go through the whole program like that. About 10 minutes to the bell.
So let's see if we get the break here through nine. You can see my position there on uh, LGVN at 93. As soon as I saw that volume coming in, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. And I'll hold it for a minute. I'd like, in a way, to be able to hold this into the open. The high of this candle's um, 9.13. High of that one's 9.20. So I'm gonna put my order at 9.20. If it breaks over 9.20, then I'd be a buyer to add for the move higher. So we've got 18 on the ask. The volume there is higher, which is good, because we're breaking through that descending resistance level. So what we want to see is a break through 920, and then a break uh, to 950. So I'm just going to hold this for a second. Let's see if we get that squeeze up to 950. Uh, I'm not going to, I haven't taken any off the table. I'm just going to hold it for a minute and put an order at 950. On the first pullback, I'm going to look to be a buyer on a dip. So although I'm still holding a position, I can add to the profit by doing a dip trade, then through the highs. Now that we've broken this level, the target logically is uh, 950. So there's 925. Looking for 928, then 930, but really watching for a one minute pullback. The one minute pullback will give me the chance to do a dip trade. There's 25, 26. So I'm holding through this pullback. The high right there is 28. I'll put a new order at 29. Actually, I'll put it at 30. I'll wait for this candle to close. And then I'll buy the first candle to make a new high. We've got about 20 seconds. So you can see on the 10 second chart how we've got this micro pullback right here following the uh, the five minute breakout. So first one minute pullback after a five minute breakout. There's 29. So the problem there is that that broke too, for, too, too quickly. See it hit a high of 30 right there. It needed to wait. So now I have to reposition for a dip entry. So the low here is, what is it? six so now i'm going to let it pull back and see if i can establish a dip off the low so i take the profit off the table because a false breakout like that it's a premature breakout it's just kind of screws up the pattern it needed to wait and then first candle to make a new high and then break out so the high of that candle is 9:30. i sold at 9:14. So I'll put a new order at 9.30. I'll watch as it pulls back. We still have six minutes to the bell. The volume profile looks good. High of this last one minute candle is 9.25. So I added back at 17 there. Smaller size on this trade. First one minute candle to make a new high. We'll see if we get the break through 30. I wanna see the break through 25 and then 26. About five minutes to the bell right now. So, yeah, small gain on that. Hit a high of 30, then dipping back down. New order will be around 9.05 to do a dip off uh, the double bottom down here, 9.06. So another kind of false breakout. Still holding within its range, but that five minute candle closes as a little bit of a topping tail, not too high. So let's see.
about four and a half minutes to the bell. 3.2 million shares of volume. High of that candle's 9.30. Bought the dip down there. So trying to buy the dip off the whole dollar. I'll see if I can position myself for a trade into the open because what I would look at at the open would be a squeeze through the high of 930, 950 and then a move up towards 10. Obviously we've got 1248 which is our daily sort of back of mind target. Nice fills on the dips. Hi, this last one minute candles 915, about three minutes to the bell. So as a reminder, especially for those on YouTube and Facebook, trading is risky. Most beginner traders lose money. This is a stock currently up 30% on 3.4 million shares of volume. These are very volatile stocks. I don't like seeing that big sell order that was there. It was at 16, but then it got pulled. It was 100,000 shares. So that, I don't love seeing that. That makes me a little nervous. They put the order. It scares people. I press the sell button and the order's gone. So someone's trying to shake people out of this. It didn't, and you know that because the order didn't execute. It just disappeared. It was brief and then gone. So the problem, of course, is that you never know when a big order comes up like that whether or not it is real, whether or not it's going to stay there. And as people start buying, it's just, you know, slowly filling, but it's just clearly a, a wall there. So a small dip for me, uh, and I sold it at 14 and, and 11. So two and a half minutes to the bell. I'll put up my disclaimer again here. So at this point, I'm probably, well, the VWAP is 884. So a dip off the VWAP, I'd be very happy with that type of entry. I'm not sure that it's gonna go down that far. This is probably gonna be a five minute pullback where this retests the previous resistance, which is going to be right about, you know, it's, it's really close to it in this area, this yellow line. But I'm a little cautious about wanting to get back in. I think I've taken three trades on this, and the winners have been getting progressively smaller. So I think it makes more sense to wait and see what this does at the open. It's our third leading gapper in the entire market. It's only up 30%, but it's our third leading gapper. I have this current five minute candles, 920. So I'll keep watching it. As we get uh, into the open, we've got one minute to the bell. Those of you on YouTube and Facebook, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up. I'll be live again first thing tomorrow for the morning show. I'm going to keep trading for students that are uh, in the chat room, Warrior Starter, Warrior Pro students. NVCR has continued to fade. It's back below 200, so probably won't be trading that. But we'll continue to watch LGVN and see if there's any more opportunities on that one. I wish the volume was a little higher, but uh, I'll, I'll work with what we have, which is limited opportunities. We're continuing to sort of try to trade through a little bit of a slower choppy market, but that's sometimes just the way it is and that's how it is right now. About 10 seconds to the bell. Three seconds.